So hey everybody, Wobblin here. Uh, it's been a while, I haven't been on Lead Dangerous in a while or made any videos, uh, but I'm back and I just started again after a year or so, and I started mining with a friend and found that it can be a lot of fun, can make you a lot of money, and I thought I'd show you how to do some mining, some basic mining, how to outfit your ship, and uh, how to get started. So we'll take a look first at how to outfit your ship. So I'm using a Python, um, which seems to work pretty well, but you can use an ASP, you can use an adder, pretty much any kind of multi-ship or any hauler I think would get the job done. So you're going to want to find a Python or whatever ship you're using. Uh, here's the, the build that I'm using for my Python, and I'll go over why I have some of these different things um, in a little bit, and yeah. So let's move on. Um, okay, so first we'll take a look at hard points. We're going to be mining void opals, so what I have on here now is two abrasion blasters and one seismic charge launcher. And whenever you're looking for any of these, uh, you're going to find them under mining tools. So you can see here I have uh, the abrasion blaster, uh, not on a turret, and the uh, seismic charge launcher. Good, and you can do this with any ship. You can see this is a two, so there's a medium hard point, and then the uh, abrasion blaster goes in a small hard point. Okay, then for utility mounts, it's up to you. Uh, you do have to have a pulse wave analyzer, so I have the A, and uh, you can get it in different types, of course, and all it changes, you can see here, is the scanner range. So the A is going to let you scan a whole a lot of asteroids, and we'll talk more about that pulse wave analyzer once we actually get to mining. Uh, then I have a point defense in case somebody tries to uh, attack me and blow out my cargo hold. These can take out those uh, those limpets that they send at me, and a couple of shield boosters on there as well. Okay, so then we'll go to the optional internal. You're going to want as much cargo as you can, really, but it is important for me, at least, to have some kind of shield on there. Um, I end up running into asteroids a lot while I'm flying around, which you'll see later, so the shield is important for me. You're going to need a collector limpet. You can see I have two on there, so collector limpet controllers. You're going to need a refinery, and uh, you're going to need a prospector limpet controller. And finally, you're going to need a detailed surface scanner. So there are four things that you have to have. The surface scanner, the prospect control limpet, the collector control limpet, and the refinery. And then the shield is optional. And then after that, just cargo racks and maybe an extra, extra collector limpet controller. Uh, great. So then we'll take a look at the core internal. Nothing special here. Uh, of course, being able to jump as far as you can is going to help you so you don't have to gas up. Uh, I'm not using a fuel scoop, so the bigger frame shift is uh, very advantageous to me. And make sure that your power plant can power your modules, and you can see I'm having no power issues here. Uh, other than that, the rest is up to you. Go for the cheapest option if you want. Uh, you can see the Python that I'm using fully equipped costs about $80 million to get uh, set up. Good, so after you get that, you have to find out where you're going. So if you go to this website here, and I'll put all the websites I'm using uh, down below, you just type in here where you are. And you can see here down below, I'm at the Segui system. And I'm looking for icy bodies, because I want void opals. So we change the ring type here to icy. And then we put the reference system to the system that I'm currently in. So, Segui, and you can see it's found it already. And find me some icy rings close by. Okay, so you can see there's quite a few with in 7 light years, 6.56 light years from me, in the system Amarishvaru. So we're going to head over there and look for our icy rings. Okay, and one final thing before you take off, and this is very important, forget this all the time, your collector limpets and prospector limpets need limpets, so you have to go into advanced maintenance down there, 
and uh, restock and you have to buy your limpets here. So I usually try and get about half my cargo hold filled with limpets, but you might want to start with more than that when you get started as you're first learning because you end up wasting a lot of limpets when you start. So I'm going to get uh, 100 to start with, confirm, and now you can see I have them in my uh, inventory here. And now finally we're ready to get started. So we're going to head over to the system that we found and start mining. Alright, so here we are in Amarishvaru, and we're going to need to open up our system map in order to find a place with icy rings. So here we have a nice ringed planet. But you can see these rings are metal rich. Let's try this next big one here. Now we have some icy rings. Good, so we'll target that and try not to get interdicted. Alright, now that that's over we'll head out to our icy ringed planet and check back when we get there. Okay, we're coming up on our planet now. You can see the rings there and what we want to do is kind of park while staying in super cruise high above the rings. Alright, this should be good enough, so we'll throttle down. And now we have to go into Analyze mode. And we're going to use our surface scanner. So what I didn't mention before is make sure you set up your fire groups uh, correctly. You can see how I have mine set up here. So collector limpets um, together with my seismic charge launcher as well as my abrasion blaster. And then on the third uh, fire group I have the prospect limpet controller on one and then my two scanners. So the pulse wave analyzer which you only use out of Super Cruise and the detailed service scanner which you use while in Super Cruise. Uh, I bound to the same one. Good, so we're going to use that detailed surface scanner and like I said we go into analyze mode which we've done and then we just push whatever button we have hotkeyed to that and now we're going to need to target the rings here and go ahead and fire one of those probes at it. There we go. Now that's going to light up all of the different types of ore that is on there. So if we go out of this mode, we just fly down and we point and take a look at what we have here. So we have some alexandrite, and what we're looking for is void opals. There's one there. You can see there's quite a few different things here, but we're interested in the void opals. So we're going to get a bit closer there and see if we can get in there and find them. So this is going to target us right in the center of that red area, but what I do is I get maybe five megameters or so away from the center, and I'll tell you why I do that in just a second, so we don't go straight to the center. Make sure you go in nice and slow, you don't want to drop in and be too far away from the ring still. So here we are coming up on the rings and we'll ease on into there. And here we are about seven megameters from the center. This looks good. Now often when you drop out into here, somebody will come in and scan you, but I've found that they don't really do anything. And we'll see if that might not even happen this time. Good, so here we are in the rings, and you can see the center is uh, 6.5 megameters away, which is great. And the reason I do that is while we scan, it's easy to get lost. So I want to make sure that I have a reference point, and I'm slowly going to make my way towards the center as I keep flying through and scanning. Okay, so we can now bring up our hard points. And you see I have my prospector and my pulse wave uh, equipped right now. Or, sorry, you can see I have my prospector and my pulse wave set to the same fire group. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down the button for the pulse wave. You can see it scans all of these asteroids. Some stay blue and some are going to light up orange. You can see some of the orange ones there. 
So the orange ones are the ones that have some kind of resource, but we're only interested in one kind of orange one, and it's going to take you a little while to find the right one. But you notice as they light up, some light up a bit darker, some light up a bit brighter. The brighter ones are going to have more resources, so we look for the brighter ones. But we want a special kind of the bright ones. And you can see now somebody came in to scan me. So as I get closer to this one that's lighting up bright here. You can see it's outlined in that grid pattern. Sometimes it's black, but as I fly around it, this particular one, because I'm very experienced, isn't going to be orange all the way around. You can see it's not as bright orange while we were here. So this isn't the kind that I want. In fact, I'll fire a prospector at it so you can actually see that this isn't going to have those um, void ovals. So what we want is a deep core mineral here. So I'll fire the uh, prospector on it and while it's going out I want to target it and that's just going to make it so I can see at the bottom left exactly what's in there. As the prospector hits it's going to scan what is in there but you can see there's no core deposits. What I want is core deposits. If there were, then on the bottom left it would show what the core deposit is, and that there is one there, it would be a different color than orange. And we'd see, when we target these parts of it, not the minerals, but we'd see asteroid fissures, and that's what we want to get the void opals. So, because we started far away from the center hotspot, now we're going to keep flying towards it, and keep holding down that pulse wave scanner, looking for more until we find one of those dark orange ones. And as soon as we find one, I'll show you how to tell if that's got those deep core deposits on it or not. Okay, so this one in front of us might be a good one. There we go. Sure enough, as you can see, not only does it light up bright, but it has some black shading in there. And that tells us that this one's definitely going to have some of those surface, uh, some of those deep core deposits we want. So we're going to shoot the prospector limpet at it and remember to target it and then it'll show us exactly what's in there. So there you can see at the bottom left core detected and it's void opals and that's what we want. And when we target some of these things you can see these asteroid fissures and there's going to be three different kinds. You see this one is high strength, there's going to be a low, and there's going to be an average. So we want to switch our uh, firing points to the ones that has that seismic charge launcher. And now we have to fire the seismic charger charges into these fissures. So we'll find first a low strength fissure. So it's a bit difficult to actually get it to break right, and I'll show you how. But the easiest way I found is you find two low strength fissures and supercharge your seismic launcher. But I'll explain that now. So now I'm targeted onto the fissure. You can see it on the left. After I fire my first seismic charge, I'm going to have 120 seconds to plant all of my charges before they blow. Um, I like to turn on my lights here, it makes it a bit easier to see them. So I have to make sure I can plant all of my charges within 120 seconds. So now we're going to charge up to the max with this seismic charge, and then we're going to launch it into that fissure. Now you can see on the top right I have 120 seconds left and that yellow and blue and red part is starting to fill up. So we're going to find another low strength fissure or target it onto one. And our goal is to get those lights, those, ye uh, those yellow lights into the blue area and it will tell us when we do that we've got an optimal charge set. So we're going to fire another one into this low fissure. Again it max, so I'm going to hold it down until it gets to three and then fire it in there. You can see we're still not to that blue spot we need to be. So we're going to look for a high one, see if we can find a high strength fissure. And this time we're just going to tap it in there. So we're not going to charge it up, I'm just going to hit the trigger and let it shoot in there. And hopefully that will give us the strength we need to get into that optimal blue zone. And that optimal blue zone, that's going to give us the most uh, void opals. So here we are above the fissure, and we'll just pop one down in there. Looks like it wasn't enough, so we'll see if we can find another one. 
And it gets a bit tricky now because we're running out of time. We have 47 seconds left. So I'll fire one into there. There, and now you can see optimum yield range. So we're ready to go. Um, we're going to get a bit far away before we blow it up. And a couple of things before we do. If you accidentally fired too much and now you're in the red, one of the things you can do is go over here, find one of the ones, and disarm that charge. And it'll take a second, but then it will disarm that charge, and then you can plant another one and try and get into that blue spot. If you found that you have finished and there's 60 seconds left, you can also go into one of those, say detonate now, and it will reduce the time down to 10 seconds and then blow it up immediately. So here we go, we're blowing up our asteroid. So you want to get far away because it will blow up your ship if you're in there. So now you can see we've released all of these void opals. You can see the rock icon next to it, but some of them are still stuck there. So you can choose to send collector limpets out now and they'll collect these. I like to wait because I find that flying my ship around is going to destroy them. So what we have to do now is free up these other ones here. Uh, these ones here are still stuck to the rocks. So we're going to change now our firing group to our abrasion blasters. And you see all of these blue ones, those are ones that need to be freed. So we fire at them. Hopefully you're a better shot than I am. There we go, and we freed that one, and then we'll free some more. And then when it's white, it means they're not in view. Maybe they're on the back side. So these blue ones, we should be able to fly in. And now you can see why I have shields, because I think it's very easy to keep running into asteroids once you fly in the middle of one of these. It's been exploded. You notice it's getting cold. I'm down to zero. So inside the asteroid, it's extremely cold, which means you're going to get that frost on your uh, cockpit window. But uh, don't worry, it won't take any damage. So if I can't see any more, I'll just go into here and target them from my uh, contacts pad, and then you can see on your scanner exactly where it is. And you'll fly around. Make sure you free all of them. Like I said, that's what I do. You can send out collector limpets now but that doesn't seem to work for me because I end up blowing them up while I'm flying around. They keep running into my ship. All right, that should be the last one. Now you can see they're all freed. So we can send out our collectors. I just want to get in the middle so that they all can get to it easily. Got to open your cargo hatch, of course, and we're going to send out all of the limpets we can. And I have a 5A and a 3A <coughs> collector uh, limpet module, so I can send out three from one and two from the other. And now you can see I have five active limpets going out collecting up all those void opals for me. And you just sit here and wait, and that's why I have two uh, collector limpet modules so that I can send out as many as I can. You hear they keep expiring. That's because they're running into things and they explode. They run into the asteroids because they're stupid. But if I fly around, I find I break them up even more. So that's why I'm just sitting here letting them do their thing. Uh, one other thing is if you're targeting something, one of these void opals, then the collector limpet will go pick it up and then it will blow up or it will disable right after it picked that one up. So you want to make sure you're not targeting anything and then they'll just keep going until they either expire, blow up, or they uh, don't have anything left to pick up. Okay, so the last of my limpets are coming back with the last of the void opals. And there we go. So now you can see there are no more void opals left, just my limpets, and they'll follow me around for a while. So I can close my cargo hatch and now go look for some more. And you can see that one asteroid gave me 14 void opals. So you only need to find about five asteroids and you'll have a full cargo hold, um, which is good because it took me about five minutes just to find that one. So now we're going to keep looking and this is where we want to find the center again uh, of the 
void opal area. You can see the top left of my scanner shows exactly where it is. That little reticle keeps locked on no matter what to the center. So there it is again and we'll just start flying this way. It's very dusty in here because I blew up that asteroid but you can also use that pulse uh, sorry, you can also use that pulse wave which will light up all the asteroids, help you see a bit and uh, keep hunting. And Hopefully you can find them quick sometimes you can, sometimes you can't uh, but now after you've done that and you've filled up your cargo hold let's say you're done now, you want to go sell them so you'll get out of the rings and you'll check your website. So we have another website for selling them. You can see we're going to use this Anara right here. Uh, you want to go to the commodities, common commodities, and again I'll put all these links in the video. Then we go down all the way to minerals and find the one we want to sell. And all of those asteroids aren't going to have void opals. Sometimes you'll break them up and you might get uh, some low pem temperature diamonds or something, but here you can see uh, what the max sell, uh, sales rate is here what the max sales rate is here. Uh, so some of them aren't worth your time. This one, for example, a thousand credits is nothing when you could get void opals that have 1.7 million nearly. Good, so we're going to sell void opals. Uh, yep, so we click on that. And we tell them where we are. Near star system. We are in Amarish Varu. So then we just search, and we want to find that best sell. So here they're listed by price down, but we don't want to fly so far, so we'll click distance. And looks like the closest one from where we are is here in this system at 66.9 light years. And we can get pretty much the full price for them there. So we'll go into our galaxy map now and find Theotokos. So we'll just bring up the galaxy map and search for Theotokos. And we saw there it's at this settlement, Mykla settlement, so you want to make sure it only has medium landing pad. Make sure you're not using a, a large ship like the Anaconda because you won't be able to sell there. And see if we can just find that uh, specific settlement so we don't have to find it once we get into system. And looks like here it is. So we're going to plot our route there, and we're going to go sell them. And uh, one thing to keep in mind while you're making your way there is uh, you're going to get interdicted. So it's very high chance that the game knows you have something worth value in your cargo hold. So you're probably going to get interdicted. Be ready to handle that on your way there. You don't want to get 100 million credits and if you fill up your cargo hold, you'll have over a hundred million um, that you'll get for selling that stuff. But you don't want to get interdicted and blown up and uh, lose that. So make sure you know how to handle it if you get interdicted. So we're going to head off now. Looks like uh, our destination for me is uh, four jumps, so I'll let you know when we get there. Alright, so we've just arrived at the settlement. All that's left to do is to sell our goods. So once we load in, we'll go to the commodities market. Just look through which one you have here. So follow the cargo until you see something in that line. And of course, we're looking for the void opals. Here we got 14 of them from that one asteroid. And you can see they sell for 1.6 million here. Our website was correct. So we'll just sell them all. You can see just that one asteroid that I got, uh, 23 million. It took me about five minutes to find that. So if you're lucky, you can make 23 million every five minutes. Uh, but I find that you can make about 100 million in an hour, maybe an hour and a half. But it's still good money, good fun, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how you do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I hope you found it helpful. Uh, one final tip. When you go out again, make sure you stock up your limpets again. I don't want to tell you how many times I've gone all the way there and found that I had no limpets. Um, but yeah, if you liked the video, you found it helpful, please like it. I just want to thank Unraveler. He's the one that got me into mining and uh, showed me the first few steps. So between that and forums, you can pretty much learn everything you need. And yeah, that's it.